Welcome, y'all. This is episode 18, 18 of our Leonard Skinner shorts, which, I don't know, we read the comments and it just seems like the shorts are going to go longer and longer. <laughs> and people keep saying, well, how come we haven't talked about this? Or how come we haven't talked about that? Um, because there's a lot to talk about. So many things we, we don't know or even have an opinion on that we're still getting to. Well, we can have an opinion. I don't know. We can make something up if we have to. We do a lot. We, we, yeah, we can make stuff up. And we can get stuff wrong, which is why we love reading the comments. <laughs> Uh, tonight's episode is one that we've been waiting for a long time. Somebody that we feel pretty close to. Uh, it's Leon Wilkinson. Uh, what what a colorful and great member of the band. I mean, colorful for sure. I mean, and as a bass player, of all time, who's your favorite bass player? I mean, Leon Wilkinson is a great bass player. I mean, we can go through all kinds of bass players, but a bass player who, who can sing background vocals with Ronnie, pretty impressive. And Leon idolized Paul McCartney. And that's why he started playing bass to begin with, uh, and, and I guess junior high. And then, as I understand it, he was in the school band. Who knows what well, he played in the school band? I don't know. Was it junior high, high school? I don't know. But he quit the school band. You know why? He joined a band called the Collegiates. Oh. That was Donnie Van Zandt's band? That was Donnie Van Zandt's high school band. I mean, all these guys started playing music when they were really young. I mean, I don't know how Alan was when Ronnie chased him up a tree, probably 12. But <clears throat> he loved the bass so much that he studied. He studied jazz bass and classic bass and all the really great bass players of the world. We're talking about bass players. I mean, I always liked John McVie, Fleetwood Mac, because of the jazz, you know, the jazz side of bass. He was a strong bass player. Listen to the song, You Make Love and Fun, and just focus on the bass. That riff he puts on that song is unbelievable. Deep, deep bass line. And I know that when you look at the best bass players of all time on the internet, they never mention Phil Lanon, who played bass like a guitar. But I love the sound that Phil made. It might have just been his music overall that I love. But yeah, I like that guy. Phil Lanon. Awesome. Yeah, pretty great. Um, Leon. Leon's in her picture. I don't know if you can see it. Here's Leon over here in the corner. We're in the dark. Got a hat on, if you can believe it. This is from 77. Um, so he joined the Collegiates. And I want to say that it was Donnie's older sister that connected him up somehow or another. Anyway, so suddenly he's into the whole Skinner, Ronnie Van Zant, you know, circle, right? Leonard Skinner's original bass player was, and y'all going to correct me if I'm wrong, Larry Johnstrom. Yeah, it was Larry Johnston, right? LJ was around for a while. He was a buddy. He was a friend of all these friends. <laughs> they all kind of stayed together. Yeah, and somehow or another, what I what I read, who knows it's true, um, it was a little rough for him. And he somehow then got hooked up with a Donnie Van Zandt, which, again, it's just the same orbit, you know. Uh, and then I didn't really know this until recently, but I guess Greg T. Walker. He was a little bit with Skinner. Early, I believe. Yeah, isn't that correct? I didn't know that. I, I'd like to learn more about Greg T. Walker and, and his... But we know that him and Gert and Ricky Medlock, they were all friends. You know, they were these guys were all friends. They're all tight. And he wound up in... I don't know why he left Skinner at that point, but he wound up going to Blackfoot, which was Ricky's band. And then Leon took his spot, as I understand it. And <clears throat> Leon was... Uh, a bass player that kind of felt Ronnie's music, kind of felt what they were doing. But he also was a guy that liked to have money. He needed, he needed a steady paycheck. <laughs> so he quit the band just as they were recording their first record and uh, started working at an ice cream factory in Jacksonville. So he needed the money. Uh, that's why they brought Ed King. And they, you know, they didn't bring Ed King in to play guitar. He just, he was going to be a bass player. He was some dude they knew that, um, hey, can you come play a bass player, play, play bass with us? Yeah, which later on, Ronnie would have never considered somebody from California ever joining the band. So why this was, I think they've been on a bill opening up for Strawberry Alarm Clock or something, but just recently had met Ed King and Ed said, hey, give me a call. Yeah. If you need somebody, yeah. hey, let's call Ed. Yeah. So Ed, Ed, Ed hitched his way down and got in the band. And somewhere during the recording of that record, Ronnie realized that Ed, he wasn't a very good bass player. And uh, they convinced Leon to come back into the band. And, um, you know, that's where the whole legend of, of Leonard Skinner started, I think, you know. 
uh, that that was the band, you know, on the first record. Um, except for the guy from California, which, you know. <laughs> he, no, no he, we love Ed King. He sure added a lot to the band, as it turned out. There's no Sweet Home Alabama without Ed King, of course. Yeah, yeah. There's no, a lot of stuff without <laughs> Ed King. But anyway, Leon had his own style, like Joe said. Dude, was their back and vocal guy. I guess the rest of them were like me and just couldn't hit a note, you know. But um, he was that guy. But he also um, was colorful. It had personality. I don't know if you all have listened to the interview. I have an interview that, that I recorded with Leon, Gary, and Allen in 1978 when they were promoting the first and last record. Um, most of the talking is done by Leon. You know, Allen says very little. Very actually. shy. He's very shy. Uh, Gary, you can always tell Gary's voice because it's always sound like he's, you know, yeah. pretty high. <laughs> A little different. They probably all were pretty high at that point. Um, he started wearing the hats. And became known as like the Mad Hatter of the band and whatnot. Um, in the plane crash, he suffered some serious, serious injuries. Injuries to his, I think, his left side and arm and nerve damage in his arm. Where after the crash, he couldn't really even, I mean, he, it was a weird thing. Who was it that broke their, fin broke their hand and they had it reset to play an E chord or somebody? Somebody we know did that. They punched the wall. It wasn't Joe Walsh. Tom Petty. It was, was it Tom Petty? <laughs> Tom Petty did that. Somebody we know, and they said, set it so I can play an E chord, you know, whatever. But um, anyway, so when that happened, they had to figure out a way for him to play bass, holding the bass like this. And so they recalibrated, you know, a bass. Is that when they put the two basses together? Well, I don't know. They had to, he had, to, had to more stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. You know, he you couldn't, know, he couldn't howl it like he's... He had the original bass that John Entwistle gave him. And then, anyway, there's some story about how they put two basses together to make something. And they fab it. Anyway, that's why he played in that style. And um, so he joined Rosin Collins. And he was the bass player there. And, and you know, again, Leon was solid. Um, you may have seen his birthday party video on this channel, which was from 81, I think. Um Quite a character, liked to do pranks. Um, like most of them, he liked to do drugs. He was in and out of rehab a time or two. Rosin Collins' band ended, and Alan Collins' band picked up. And that's where Billy and Leon, I guess Billy and Leon were friends forever. I think so. I think that's how Billy got in the band, was he was trailing around with Leon, I think. But so they shifted right from there into Alan Collins, which was, you know, to me, a sad project, just because it didn't really seem like an Alan Collins project. It seemed like, you know, Jimmy Daugherty was singing, because they wrote most of the songs, too. Uh, but they didn't promote it. There was all kinds of stuff going on. And then, you know, these guys left out in the street. And I think everybody in the Skinner circle at that point was trying to find ways to make money. There are guys who made money by writing books, whether they're true or not. Guys like Gene Odom, who do... You know, 20 bucks to give you an interview or whatever. Uh, but there were a lot of people uh, doing that, including the former members of Leonard Skinner. So as it turned out, um, Leon and Billy wound up in a Christian band called Vision. I want to say this is 85. Anyway, I saw him in Memphis and didn't even realize what I was seeing. It was at the old movie house on Highland, and Billy Powell wrote on the back wall, Billy Powell, you know, which is very, very cool. I don't know where the piece of drywall is. But... <laughs> So while they were doing that, I'm sure they weren't making a nickel. Um, the whole tribute thing came back up. Now, for us fans, it was great. But for the band members, it was greater because it was a meal ticket, right? They were struggling. Yeah, it was money. And I, some people criticize them for doing it. And some people, like me, say, you know, you're spreading the gospel. You know, this is like the Christian band for Skinner, in a way. Because we're, we're reading a good book and we're spreading the gospel. But... Um, of course, Leon was a bass player. Things went well. Uh, and then some weird stuff happened. Now, as I understand it, Leon, once or twice, was somebody tried to murder him. That's odd. One was like on the tribute tour, like 91 or 90 or something. I don't know. Ed King found Leon on the tour bus with his throat slit. And basically called people and whatever, and he, he survived. And there was another incident that was really an odd, seemingly attempted murder situation. 
Um, anyway, it came all the way to 2001, where Leon had went back to Jacksonville, stayed at the Sawgrass Marriott. I've stayed there before. To go, he was had some kind of DUI charge or something. He had to go back to court the next day. And the next morning, they find him dead in his room. Um, all kinds of conspiracy, you know, theories about that. But here's a guy that, you know, did a lot of drugs over his life. His body wasn't in the greatest. And how many rock stars have been found dead in their hotel room? I mean, I think that's what happened to John Entwistle, even, in Japan, it seems like. But long story short, um, Leon was no longer in the band. And the band had to scramble because he was the third real, you know, had three original members. Right. We were scheduled to see him like two weeks later at Horseshoe Casino in yeah. Tunica. Right? I want to say it's the first show after Leon's death. And just like with Ronnie, they put his top hat on a, uh, on a, mic, on a mic stand, stand you know, off to the stage right. Uh, and they just, you know, kept going. There was, we were wondering, we thought the concert might be canceled. I can remember having a lot of doubt about it, you know. But that was the night we saw Billy Powell so drunk at the slot machine, right? <laughs> that was a night. Yeah. I mean, it was nice to see, meet Billy Powell, but it wasn't quite the person we expected, I think. He was wasted. But that was when we had the encounter with the waitress. Y'all yeah. don't want to hear about that. That's, no. not, that's not very cool. But um, Leon Wilkinson, there's so much more to talk about. So we just scratched the surface, kind of gave you the bio of what we know. And... Um, Recently, I just watched a YouTube video or something that, that I think it was YouTube that Judy had an interview with uh, somebody who came in like a day later or something. And she had told him that she saw Leon at the club and I'm saying probably scared cafe the night before he was found dead. And he seemed fine drinking cranberry juice. So there's more, you know, they just maybe his, his liver gave out. Who knows? You know, was he murdered? Is it just. Organ failure, I don't know. You don't think Judy Murray? No, I don't think Judy had anything to do with it. <laughs> um, his manager, I can't think of him, Ron Bowman or somebody like that, wrote a book called The Murder of Leon Wilkinson or something, which I, it was a self-published Amazon kind of book, which, you know, seems like to me he was still trying to profit off the bands, you know. Leon was his meal ticket, and so then he kept trying to make money off of Leon's death or whatnot. So I don't really know. And there was never any, you know, the autopsy just said, you know, he was a, basically he was a drug addict and his body was in bad shape. That's really what killed him, was natural causes according to the autopsy. Obviously, we're asking for more information. Any information out there for Leon, we would love to have, to hope that we could spread, spread the word about Leon. So what we know is that Leon loved his family. He, um... He was, he was a Christian man. He um, loved his friends. He was a loyal friend. Just, just a damn good guy, right? Um, and as bass players go, I still think that he should be listed when they start listing the top 50 bass player, rock bass players of all time. Will they ever do that? Will they ever list Leon? You know, will Warren Zevon ever get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Never. I hope not, because I hate those people. <laughs> I hate those people. If True Lombard's not in the Rock and Roll Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, nobody should be. <laughs> so hell with you. Um, anything else on Leon tonight, or we just shut it up? I think I think I think we've done all we can do. Well, we um, it's a start. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's a start. We the next the next show we're going to have some unreleased recordings that we're going to play. It's going to be really cool. Something you've never, ever heard, ever, ever. In fact, I've only heard it once. But we're going to hear it on the next one on episode 19. Um, this is the close of episode 18 from the Skinner Shorts. And um, thank you. We'll see you next time.